Okay, so I'm going to take you through another example of balancing equations. Okay, this time we're going to look at a redox process. Okay, so we're going to look at the reaction between silver ions and zinc. Okay, and that gives us silver as a solid and zinc ions. Alright, so remembering when we're looking at our steps, we've these are our reactants, and these are our products, okay? So, um, we've only got um, one form of each atom to worry about, so there's, we can start really anywhere when we're looking at making sure we've got balance, because there's no real complex uh, compound or substance that we have to worry about. So let's write out silver and zinc and see how much we've got on each side. So we've got one silver here, one silver here, zinc, we've also got one of each atom. So we're looking like we've already got a balanced equation. But remembering, we also need to take charge into account. Alright, and in this case we've actually got some charge that we need to worry about. So we have a plus one on this side and we have a plus two on this side. Okay, so obviously now our charge is not balanced. So to balance our charge, we add a coefficient in front of the charge species. Okay, in this case it's the silver. So we add a two in front of that, all right? And now we have a plus two charge on this side, which is good because now our charges are balanced. But we've added in another atom of silver. So now we've got two silver ions, okay, on our reactant side of the equation. So what that means is we need to balance the silver on the other side. So to do that, we add in another coefficient in front of the silver on the other side, and we have two. So now we've got the same amount of silver on each side, we have the same amount of zinc on each side, and we have the charge balance that we need. So again, we now have a balanced equation. All right, so make sure, particularly in redox processes, or anything um, that has ions present, you need to make sure that you're really balancing charge as well. Okay, so to do that, again, it doesn't matter what charge it is. The charge could be zero, the charge could be minus two, the charge could be plus seven. You just need to make sure that they're the same on both sides of the equation to make sure you've got a balanced equation, okay?